I grew up in a family of 10 in segregated Shreveport, Louisiana. My father, Thomas H. Davis, was a successful businessman, and we became one of the few families that owned a car, a Model T Ford. As a young man, my father gave me permission to move to Detroit, Michigan, and live with my aunt and uncle. They were among the thousands of families that moved there in 1914. Henry Ford had recently created the Work Incentive Program, which he dubbed the Ford $5 Day. My father foresaw potential opportunities for me to receive a better education and career based on my growing interest in the automobile. When I arrived in Detroit, the automotive industry was moving into high gear, and the city was alive with activity. People from all over the country were moving to Detroit, both blue and white-collar workers. I attended Cass Technical High School at night, aiming to combine my love for cars with solid business training. When I chose to specialize in accounting, my counselor discouraged me anticipating that no one would hire a black accountant. I soon learned that crossing into white occupations was not easy. During the day, I worked as a shoe shiner, and during my last year at CAS, I took a part-time position in a car garage. I assisted the mechanics and cleaned the garage. In 1934, during the Depression, Detroit experienced some decline, I lost the job at the garage and began a door-to-door -door search for a new opportunity. Unable to find work, I started my own car wash business at a local gas station. This business grew substantially, and I caught the attention of the superintendent at the Dodge plant by the name of Mr. Lampkin. He offered me a job at the Dodge automobile plant in the foundry, making 27 cents per hour. Although I had no interest in foundry work, I accepted the position. Most of my co-workers were black. As usual, whites had the jobs where the heat, dust, and noise weren't so bad. After a few weeks, Lampkin transferred me to the machine shop where the work was easier. I worked 11 months at Dodge when another opportunity arose setting my career on track. Lampkin obtained for his son, Merton Lampkin, a Chrysler Plymouth dealership, and arranged for me to work there part-time selling cars. I will never forget my first demo, a 1936 Plymouth two-door. Upon my arrival, Mr. Lampkin made one condition. I was not allowed to sell on the showroom floor with the white salesman. Nevertheless, the dealership hiding me in the back room was a blessing in disguise. It forced me to go into the community alone and find customers. I was challenged every day to find new clients through my own ingenuity. Thus, my skills as a salesman improved tremendously. I built up a large clientele in the black community, many of whom worked at Dodge and lived in a small enclave near downtown Detroit. Working in this small area made it easy for me to drum up business. I went into the community and earned people's trust and confidence. Mutual respect and faith in people's honesty is still the best way I know to keep old customers and attract new ones. My sales grew. With my growing success, the mistreatment by white salesmen and other employees also grew. I fought back honestly. In my first sale job, I learned you must overcome disadvantage by turning them into an advantage. 1938, the year I decided to go into business for myself, was a difficult year. Many were still caught up in the Depression, and about 67% of blacks in Detroit had only seasonal jobs or no job at all. To start my business, I had to obtain financing but most banks refused loans to blacks. Despite many obstacles, I found a financier and a building, and on December the 4th, 1939, I opened Davis Motor Sales. I sold all makes of used cars and was a broker for new cars. During my first year, while many others were going out of business, I made more money than I ever thought I could. 
I developed a good relationship with many established dealers as a broker for new cars, particularly Al Harmon at Lewis Rose DeSoto Plymouth. I was successful in obtaining a Studebaker distributorship in Detroit. Studebaker had only 2% of the car market and only two blacks owned Studebakers in Detroit. Along with my growing success on September the 20th, 1941, I married Mary Agnes Miller, who I had met several years earlier. She would become my greatest inspiration and support for the rest of my professional career.